Hello there everybody, I'm the Almighty Zentaco. Today we are going to learn how to make an action-adventure game like Zelda, or at least the very basics of it. So, <clears throat> what we're going to need to do is click new and start a new project. Alright, so, first thing we're going to want to do is increase the size of our frame. So let's just add a zero to both of these values to make the size much bigger. But keep in mind that the uh, the size of our screen is still 640 by 480. The size of your screen is going to be important for scrolling because we're going to use the panel scrolling method that you see in Zelda, and that requires you to uh, do some math involving the size of your the width and, and uh, height of your screen. So, <clears throat> all right, uh, let's change the background color to green. I think that's green. I'm red green color blind. That's definitely not green. We're going to go with that. Uh, we're going to make this, it's essentially going to be some grass. So let's put some backdrops in here. And I have some art already made for this, so I'm going to make this my bush. There we go. need to set this as an obstacle. And I'm going to resize this. So we're going to make this 64 pixels by 64 pixels. <clears throat> okay, another thing we're going to need to do um, because these are going to be screens that uh, that the camera is going to pan over to, um, and this is just a big, large level, it becomes difficult to, for editing purposes to know the size of your screen. So we're going to need to make some uh, some screen indicators to let us know how big each panel is. So we're, to do that, we're going to make a uh, just a backdrop. So add another backdrop. Color it some some color. Doesn't matter. Just you know something obvious so you notice your, your uh, indicator. We'll make ours blue, and this needs to be the size of our uh, window. So it's going to be 640 by 480. And what I like to do is just kind of make a little checkerboard. I copy these, and uh, like so, just so I can I can know you know exactly where a screen is. It'd be really nice if Click Team would add a checkerboard function for the background of your editor like this, just to make this easier. This should probably be built in, but since they don't have it, this is the, probably the easiest way to go about it right now. You can also make like an active object, um, and then just like right click and clone it a bunch of times, and then at start a frame, delete it, and it'll get rid of all of them. But this is just as good as well, it just takes a second longer. Anyway, since we're not going to make this a very big level, I'm not going to make a ton of these. Oops. Just enough to have a few screens, and uh, we'll delete them before we before we uh, finish the game. All right, <clears throat> so now we can see where our screens are at. Let's go ahead and uh, fill this out a bit. So I'm going to paint these these trees around the edges of my screen, just like in Zelda. And yes, I'm aware I'm doing this very haphazardly, but that's okay. do a couple more panels, we'll fill them out real quick, and then we'll move on to the code. Uh, we're going to use a built-in movement for this, just because it's the easiest thing to do. You could also do a movement with fast loops, or, you know, there's a million ways to do it, but uh, we're going to use the built-in movement, because I do feel like the built-in movement is pretty good for an action RPG game. Alright, that'll be fine. <clears throat> so... Actually, let's add some more backdrops. I got a few more backdrops, so I'm going to add another backdrop. I got some stumps I made. So let's, let's uh, import this. Here's a stump. And again, I'm going to make this 64 by 64. 64 pixels by 64 pixels. Okay. I'm going to copy a few of these around just to kind of give us something to look at. There we go. Um, I'm going to clone this one. And I'm going to change this one and import another piece of art. I have a rock. So, boom, there's my rock. Resize my rock to 64 by 64. And obviously you can have your uh, tiles be any size you want. But I do like to make things based on tiles just because it makes it easier to keep sort of uniformity throughout your game. 
Um, but as you can see, I'm really not on a grid when I'm dropping these. You can, as you know, I already told you guys about it. You can, uh, you can show the grid and you can snap to the grid and change the grid size. I'm on a 16 by 16 grid, but I have 64 by 64 panels, so or uh, sprites, so it's not really matching up. But whatever. <clears throat> okay, so now we got that there. Let's delete our little screen indicators. There we go. Um, oh wait, I gotta make sure that these are in fact obstacles. Okay, so that's an obstacle. This one used to be set to an obstacle, and the rocks need to be set to obstacles. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, now we need to add a camera object. So insert an object and add another active object. Rename this to camera. Now this is going to need some alterable values. We're going to need four of them. We're going to need uh, x pos, y pos, target x, and target y. Target x, target y. All right, we'll come back to this in a second. <clears throat> um, oh, also make sure this unchecked visible at start. We don't want to see that. And then we're going to insert another active object. And this is going to be our player. So name this player. I have some art for this, so I'm going to import that now. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Let me let me cancel that. Yes. All right. Let's do that again. I don't know if I imported that correctly. Okay. Import this. Import and hotspot center center. Perfect. I'm importing it as an animation. Um, so anyway, this is actually the walking animation. So I'm gonna drop those over here. I'm gonna go to my stopped animation and delete these excess frames because I only want the static animation for this. I'm gonna make sure that it is looped so that he can stay looping in a stopped animation. I'm going to paste this into the left direction and I'm going to click flip horizontal, which you can also press control I. All right, <clears throat> now back to the walking. Um, I need to move these frames around a bit. All right, let's see. See if this looks good. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna loop this and I'm gonna have the top speed be about 16. Um, now I'm gonna copy all these frames. I'm gonna drop it over here. Again, loop, set the higher speed to 16. And uh, we're going to need to invert all of these, flip these. <clears throat> okay, so this is our huge link looking dude. We're gonna shrink him a bit, unless you wanna have an absolutely enormous player character, which you probably don't. Um, we're just gonna make him 64 by 64 so he matches the size of our grid. You know what? He is the player. I'm gonna make him a tad bit bigger. I'm just gonna scroll him down. All right, he's 77 by 77, whatever. All right. So click on the movement option, and we're going to change this from static to eight directions. Um, the speed is probably a little high, so I'm going to set this to mm, 30. And also, I'm going to click stick to obstacles. If you don't click sticks to obstacles, uh, he will kind of bounce into them. Actually, I'll uncheck it to show you, to show you what these uh, both these look like. All right, so go to the event editor. We need to make sure he can collide with obstacles. So right click on the player, under collisions, select backdrop. So whenever you collide to the background, we are going to go to the movement and stop. That is literally all you need to do. Now we have movement. It's still a little fast, I think. Um, and as I said, see, he, he kind of just, he kind of bounces when he touches that. I don't like that. Um, you guys might, if you like that, keep it the way it is. I'm gonna change a few things. First, we, I don't like the way he's colliding. Um, I don't, right now it's set to fine detection, so that means that it's pixel perfect collision, so he can get hung up on stuff uh, because he's irregularly shaped. So I'm gonna set that to um, get rid of use fine detection. That'll collide with his bounding box. Next, I'm going to go to the player and I'm going to alter his movement and click stick to obstacles. Also, I'm going to lower his speed to 20. Let's give that a test and see how that looks. All right, I'm liking this better. See, he sticks the obstacles without bouncing around. It looks much better. Now, it does create a sense of drag though on them. Like you, if I'm holding into it and moving like this, I'm moving left and up, he just kind of drags slowly. But you know, that's fine, whatever. Um, 
Another thing to keep in mind is you can have, this is eight direction movement, so you can have eight directions of animation for this. I only have two. Uh, you might want to add an up and down as well, but I didn't feel like doing the artwork, for, so I mean you still get the general idea, you know. Alright, so now we need to do the scrolling, and someone is texting me. My buddy wants to play Overwatch, which I will do after I make this. Alright, we need to do some scrolling. <clears throat> so, uh, we have our uh, camera object, so what we need to do is make an always event, and we are always going to set the uh, scrolling center window position in frame relative to our camera object. Okay, now we <clears throat> we need to move our, our camera object. So what we are going to do is set another always event. Now give me a second to think on. Um, okay, this is what I call panel scrolling, and this is a formula that allows you to uh, move the camera whenever the character gets to the edge of the screen and crosses the boundary It'll move all the way to the next screen. So what we're gonna do is always have the um, Exposition of this object of the camera object Set to uh, The player the exposition of the player so grab that minus the exposition of the player Um, mod. This is modulus. This is a function that returns the remainder after division. You don't need to know what it does. If you want to do some research and figure it out, be my guest, but I'm not going to explain to you. Anyway, uh, it's a uh, mod screen width plus one half of the screen width. So the formula is essentially set the exposition to the to the object that you want the camera to follow, to center on, uh, to that exposition minus that exposition, mod screen width plus one half of the screen width. So <clears throat> our screen width is 640, and half of that would be, uh, whoop, I said 641, is 640, half of that being 320. And that will center our X position. Now we need to do the same thing for the Y position. So we're going to set the position, Y coordinates, <coughs> to uh, to the player's Y, minus the player's Y, uh, mod screen width, one half screen width, okay, and that was uh, 480 plus half of 480, so that's uh, 240. Now that should... Let's double check this. Set Y position to Y, mod 240 uh, plus 240, set X position to X, minus X position to yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yes. And we're centering display. Okay, so this should work for some basic uh, panel scrolling. Let's see. Boom. Okay, now that works really nice. So um, if that's what you want, you know, you can leave it there, but I'm gonna combine this with our tween, with our uh, smooth scrolling tween that we learned previously. Um, to kind of make this just look less poppy. So to do that, we are going to need to set, um, hold on, set, we need to set, we essentially we need to have the uh, this camera go to the target X. So we need to set the target X to this. Instead of the Y position here, this needs to be the target X and the target Y. Because that's, uh, instead of just snapping to the middle, we, that is where we want it to go and we're gonna tween to it. So go ahead and delete that if you don't if you don't want any of that. All right, we're gonna set the alterable value on our uh, camera object, the target X to uh, the player's X minus the player X. No, sorry. Uh, minus the player's X position. No, not not Y. Exposition, um, mod screen width, which was uh, 640 plus 320. And we could also go ahead and like these values, we could grab them at start, like, uh, you know, figure out the size of our screen and then <clears throat> that way it'll, it would allow you to, to go in here and change this easier instead of having to plug this in. But it's unlikely you're going to change the screen resolution of your game. Uh, in the middle of the game. It is probably something you do in the options, so you can always set that then instead of hard coding it here. Anyway, uh, okay, so target X is going to be the X position of the player minus the X position of the player mod 640 by 320. Now we need to do the similar thing for the uh, target Y. 
which is going to be the Y position minus the Y position of our player mod uh, 480 plus 240. Let me double check this. Set target X to X minus X mod 640. Yep. Target Y to Y minus Y mod 480. Okay, that looks good. Now we need to tween it. So we need to always set. <coughs> um, all right. So we need to always set the position of our camera. Set the X coordinate to the value of X pos. And then we need to set the Y coordinates to the value of Y pos. And then we need to change Y pos to uh, create our tween effect. And if you remember correctly, that is uh, like, if you want to change the X position to tween it, it would be the X position uh, equals X position plus your target X position minus your X position times your modifier. So for us, it'd be like 0 0.1. <clears throat> okay, so we need to all always set the alterable value of X position to the value of X position plus the value of target X um, minus the X position, the value X position. Okay, we're going to need to put a parenthesis around this for our order of operations. And now we're gonna multiply this by 0 0.1. <clears throat> so go ahead and copy that line and we're gonna edit it. So we're gonna change X pos to Y pos and then change all instances of X to Y. And that should be everything we need. I might've made a mistake, we'll find out. Let's test it. Let's see if our tween is working. There we go. I gotta test the uh, Y position though. Let's go down a panel and see how that works. Perfect. Okay, so that, uh, that is some very basic uh, stuff you're gonna need for a Zelda-like game. Um, I'm gonna do more tutorials on this. I'm gonna add attacking and enemies and enemy movement and stuff, but this is how you get the uh, basic movements down and, and uh, you know, this sort of panel scrolling. So, um, hope you guys found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave me a message and I will try to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Um, I'm gonna go play me some Overwatch. You guys have a fantastic day.